Hello and welcome to DFS Preview for the 2023 Farmers Insurance Open. My name is Eric, and here at Sweet Spot DFS, it's all about trying to hit the optimal lineup every single week. And in these preview videos, what I like to do is go over the stats I think you need to target to build your lineups around, which of course means looking at the bucket system, which if you're unfamiliar with, I have a link in the description below. They'll send you to a video that explains all about it. And you really only need to watch the first five minutes of that video to really understand what it's about. However, it is an 18 minute long video, so if you are interested, again, there's a video link in the description below. Now, I'm not just going to be talking about the bucket system. I'm also going to be talking about the tournament information, as well as the two golf courses that are at play this week. I'll go over past optimal lineups and GPP winning lineups dating back to 2018 to kind of give you an idea of how to build lineups this week. Maybe there's, you know, a common trend that we want to follow. We'll figure that out during that section. I'll also review the American Express to show you how well the bucket system did last week, as well as the marquee tee times, the entire sweet spot process, to give you a little bit more confidence when we start talking about the buckets for this week, which I will close this video with. But before we get into any of that, I want to go over some giveaways, and I will run a giveaway at the end of the section. But let's first of all, let me remind you what those giveaways are. The first one is basically a participation giveaway. If you are subscribed to this channel and you comment on any of my videos, not only will you be entered into the monthly giveaway, which you see on the screen now, you'll also be entered into the weekly giveaway. And I'd like to give $5 away every single week to everyone who participates on my channel from week to week. So I'll be running the giveaway for the American Express in this video, like I stated last week, and the giveaway going for next week will be put into the preview of what's the next tournament is it the waste management i think it is well either way next monday i will do the preview uh in the preview i'll also run a giveaway for this week so if you want entries into that giveaway comment on any of the videos you see me post this week also be subscribed to the channel because i'm not going to give away money for people who aren't subscribed to the channel um again it's my way to reward you for participating you know i, I provide this information for you it's just the only thing I ask for uh, in return. So anyways, again, monthly and weekly giveaway, the same thing. Be subscribed, comment on the videos that I post. And then at the end of the month, if we reach the subscriber goal, which you can see all the way over there to the left, we're at 477 out of 500 subscribers. If we can get over 500 subscribers, I will give away $50 to anyone who has participated on this channel for this month. Now, if we don't reach the goal, that's fine. I won't give away $50. Instead, I'll give away a t-shirt that has my logo on it or the Sweet Spot DFS logo on it. So I'll give a, a t-shirt away to someone who has participated on the channel. So either way, I'm rewarding you guys for and girls for um, participating on the channel. So that is giveaway one and two, the weekly and monthly subscriber giveaway. I'm also kind of doing a rebate of sorts. If you sign up use, on prize picks using the promo code Sweet Spot, there's also a link in the description, by the way, that if you click on that, the promo code will already populate in the promo code section of it. So you won't even have to type it, but you sign up using the promo code sweet spot, put at least $20 in your account. I'm going to give you your $20 back. Plus prize picks will match your deposit up to $100. So if you only put 20 in so you can play this for free, you'll have $40 to your account because again, prize picks is going to match your deposit. Now you can go ahead and put a hundred bucks in there they'll give you an additional 100 plus you'll get 20 from me. So it's still a win-win no matter what. Again, link in the description, sign up on prize picks using the promo code sweet spot, put $20 in your account and you will get $20 back from me. So those are kind of, you know, normal giveaway or just giveaways. I'm providing some free pieces of information to you guys. Uh, let me go ahead and put them on the screen right now. Let's go in this. I'm providing a cheat sheet. This is free. It really doesn't even require you to participate, although it's welcomed. Um, and it doesn't require you to be subscribed. There's a link in the description that has this cheat sheet. Once you go to the site, because it's a Google Doc, uh, it's a Google Sheet, I should say. All that I ask you to do or suggest is go to the file menu, go and scroll down to make a copy. It's the fourth option. Uh, from the top in the file menu. Make a copy, because that's the only way that you can use the filters on this spreadsheet. And there are two tabs. We got the dream sheet, and then we've got the bucket system, which I need to update, which I will uh, once I get done with this video. But th these are the only ways that you can provide 
uh, or the only ways you can use the filters that I have on here. And, and you can also follow along with me during this video with everything that I'll show you, because we'll go over the buckets, which means I will be using the filters on here. You don't have to use the filters, but if you want, uh, you do have to make a copy. So again, file menu, go down and make a copy. That way you can do whatever you want to the cheat sheet uh, and to the bucket system. It is yours. And again, you can follow along with me. I'll also provide an optimizer tomorrow. Uh, if you didn't already know, I like to do strategy videos every Tuesday and I start going live with those. So if you come in and participate for that video, not only are you going to get an entry into uh, the weekly and monthly giveaways, but you get to ask me whatever questions you want and I will engage with you and I'll use the optimizer to build lineups based off of the golfers that you like the most. So again, I'll go live with that tomorrow, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, so that's 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Kind of steps on the toes of some other people that like to... Um, to podcast, but honestly, it's the best time for me to do it. So that's just how it is. And last week I was live for three and a half hours, nearly three and a half hours answering all questions from everyone. I mean, I had a few uh, people in there asking tons of questions and that's wonderful. I love to engage. So come take a visit or visit me tomorrow night, 8 PM central standard time uh, and ask some questions. I'll build some lineups for you. You know, I'll use the bucket system to build lineups for you. Okay, so those are basically all the giveaways that I have, uh, and I will use that optimizer tomorrow, by the way. I, I don't know if I mentioned, I mentioned that's part of the giveaway, but I am also providing an optimizer for anyone who has subscribed to the channel and participates with me. So you can follow along with me during that strategy video while I use it uh, and build lineups with me, or if you don't want to follow along with me, you can just use the optimizer and build lineups on your own. So that will be available. Okay, let's go ahead and, 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 and do the giveaway from last week. So let me put that on the screen. We had a total of 45 or 44 entries. Remember, you get one free entry per video that you comment on. So regardless of how many times you comment on one video, you're only getting one free entry for that video. But we have 44 entries. I, I don't see how many are unique. By the way, you're also added to the monthly um, right down here. Same names are added to the monthly giveaway. And of course, I like to show this just so no one thinks that I'm fooling around. Basically, when I um, once I hit yes, this is going to change and it's going to be randomized and we'll see a winner here up at the top. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead and see who's going to win $5 from me. Reach out to me at email, on my email. You see it on the screen right now, sweetspotdfs at gmail.com. Reach out to me on Twitter. DM me, I should say, and we'll figure out a way to get you that money, whether that's Google Pay, Venmo, PayPal, whatever you'd like. So drum roll, please. The winner is Joanne. This is the second week in a row. Congratulations, Joanne. The... Uh, the lid was taken off of the bucket and you just continue to win now. This is two weeks in a row. Congratulations, Joanne. Uh, you can see that your entry was, was won during the short version of the strategy video, which was still an hour long. So it's hard to say it was short, but considering it was three hours long in total during the live version, it's still a shorter version. So that is where Joanne won. And again, like I said, there's a randomizer that I have over here. So if I go ahead and throw a command in here, like typing a one and hitting enter, it's going to change. Uh, I can put a two here It just any command that I put randomizes it. So it is completely random. I am not um, at all rigging this for anyone to win. So anyways, Joanne, congratulations. Um, Joanne is one of those that constantly participates on the channel so um i think it's definitely um deserved so congratulations joanne let's go ahead and get into this so the first thing i want to talk about is the golf course in the tournament so we have two golf courses we have tory pines south and tory pines north all golfers will play each one of these golf courses before the cut, it is a 36 hole cut. Unlike last week at the American Express where we had a 54 hole cut, this is 36. So they will play the two golf courses. 
Again, they'll play the north and the south. Now, the south is 70, it's a par 72, 7,600 yards. The north is a par 72, 7,200 yards. And this was much shorter prior to last year, two years ago, where they made a uh, renovation to lengthen the course. I think they added like 200 yards to it. So it used to play much shorter and much easier. The north course will play significantly easier than the south course, just, just automatically. Uh, it's very, like, I don't think it's ever close to the North performing uh, worse than the South or the South, I should say, performing better than the North. So keep that in mind. And that makes an interesting point of decision-making because weather is coming in and it is, I think it's currently forecasted that Friday is going to be a bit more windy than Thursday and it could be vice versa, but this is an interesting, uh, interesting thing to consider. The North course playing easier. It is my belief, and this doesn't apply to every everybody. I am a competitive golfer. I think it's easier. Well, I should say this. My mindset when I play a golf course or a golf tournament is if there was a two course rotation like this, I'd rather play the harder course during the harder conditions, and I'd rather play the easier course during the easier conditions Primarily because scoring is still going to be tough at the south course no matter what, or at the harder course, I should say, that I'm still most likely going to be forced to use, you know, basically my scrambling and short game to provide me pars. Like, birdies will probably be difficult at the south course regardless, so I would still just want to scramble and, and do my best to make par at the hard course in hard conditions. So I don't think there's much of a, you know, a difference when it comes to making birdies at the South course. It's just, it's just going to be tough regardless. Now the North course, when the conditions are more benign, scoring is much easier. You know, you have, by the way, you have POA greens on the South course and you've got bent grass greens on the North course. So North course, if the weather is, like I said, benign, uh, where there's really no weather at all to to worry about, these greens are just going to get eaten up by these players. They're going to be very receptive. They're going to be easier to shoot at pins. You know, of course, if the wind picks up, it's going to be much more challenging to shoot for the pins. So again, I'd rather play the easier course when the weather is the easiest. That doesn't apply to everyone. Not all golfers are like that, by the way. They actually would have it the inverse, where they would rather play the easier course on the hard weather day and the hard course on the easier weather day. I, I, I personally, when it comes to DraftKings scoring, I think you make more birdies at the north course when the weather... I, I just think you'll make more birdies, period, when the north course is playing the easiest with weather. So that's just my personal take. Take it or leave it. It's up to you. But that's how I feel about that. So those are your golf courses. The tournament is 156 players. Um, I believe it's another Pro-Am. I can't remember off the top of my head, and I didn't even look into it, but a Pro-Am is still a Pro-Am. It's, you know, people are going to live with the same kind of playing conditions they had to last week when it comes to group formation. So I'm assuming we're going to have groups of two, like we did last week. And we'll go over the uh, the marquee tee times, because it is actually worth pointing out because they, they did perform pretty well last week. Uh, and again, I'll review that here sh coming up shortly. So keep all of that in mind. Uh, and teams of two, I think we can use. Last week, I was kind of skeptical until I saw the marquee tee times after the fact. And I was like, oh, yeah, I should probably use marquee tee times. So I'll also be doing that in the strategy video this week is going over marquee tee times. Uh, the tee times already came out, which I didn't have time to update to do this video in time. So I'm skipping that and just leaving it till tomorrow, like I usually do. Uh, but yeah, keep that in mind. Again, it's a 36-hole cut, and it's all that you really have to take into consideration. It's similar strength of field from last week. I think last week it was a, a bit, a bit, uh, a bit. How, how would you term that? How would you phrase that? A bit harder, a bit more, a bit stronger. That's what it is. Last week is a bit stronger than this week. It's still in the 300s. Last week, I think it was like three. Actually, let's let's take a look. I forgot that I even had this up. We take a look at 2023, and our strength of field was 400. Okay, so there's 400 points. And this week, we have three, 
319. So close to 320. So a little weaker this week than it was last week, which is crazy. Farmers Insurance Open, you would imagine higher name golf courses are coming to this event, but these are the old strength of field points that this old strength of field calculation, I should say, when the point totals were over 12. Because <laughs> right now it's like you, you get a course or a, a tournament rating of like 12, 11, 10. I'm using the, the full numbers that they used before. So I'm usually within seven points of the calculation. I don't have like the, the, uh, the bonus points that usually gets added. I, Cause I, I don't remember how that's calculated. So anyways, these are basically your raw strength of, uh, strength of field points. So take that for what it's worth. If you have some way of reviewing, uh, weaker strength of field tournaments versus stronger ones. Maybe you can find a baseline versus, you know, what they perform at weaker ones and try to figure out who really plays better in these types of events. But I think it's golfer versus golf course. And this is a hard golf course. The, the Torrey Pine South course is a hard golf course. So that's kind of what I would really be basing a lot of my analysis on this week and, and selecting players from. So keep that in mind. Um, and that I think wraps up the golf course and tournament information. So let's move on to the next piece, which is reviewing the pass optimal lineups, which starts in 2018. So I'm just going to kind of rapid fire through these, your optimal lineup in 2018 left $2,200 on the table. And it started with a nine K golfer with Jason Day, dropped down to an $8,700 golfer in Tony Finau, and then we had four 7K golfers in between. So very interesting take. Now, a more realistic optimal lineup would be removing Tony Finau at 8,700 and inserting Justin Rose at 10,600. That gets our salary up to 49,700. So again, we go with 110, a nine and four sevens, or really we could just Start in the nine, go to an eight, and still have four sevens. But leaving that much money on the table, not extremely realistic. Moving on to 2019, our optimal lineup actually only left $200 on the table. And that consisted of Justin Rose at $10,800, Gary Woodland at $9,000, Hideki Matsuyama at $8,000, Adam Scott at $7,500. Billy Horschel at 77 and Taylor Gooch at 68. So this is that 1098776 model that I, you know, advocate week in and week out. That was your optimal lineup. Now your GPP winning lineup, actually, you, you would remove Woodland at nine. You would remove Gooch at 6,800 and you would insert Ryan Palmer at seven and also Brant Snedeker who finished 62nd place in it, uh, $8,400. So to review that salary structure, you'd actually go with the 10, two eights, and three sevens. That is a more like conservative approach. And, and that obviously won a GPP back in 2019. So it's a definite, or it's definitely a way to build lineups and it still follows my strategy where you start with the 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 6 format and you can make two substitutions. So quite literally what they did here was they start with a 10 keg offer. They skipped the 9K range and they actually traded down. So they went from a 9K to another 8K. So now they have a 10 and two eights. Well, then they skipped, uh, they actually traded up from a 6K to a 7K. So those are your two substitutions you can make. It works out just fine. So that was a 10, 8, 8, and then three sevens. Or you just follow the 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 6 model in 2019. And you'd come across the optimal lineup that way. So again, I advocate for that and I, I, I will continue to do that. Going to 2020, we actually had three different types of, of lineups. I have a sweet spot optimal that follows the sweet spot model and I have an optimal lineup as well as a GPP wing lineup. Your optimal lineup in 2020 started with John Rahm at 11,300 and then we had two 8K golfers, both in Mark Leishman at 83 and Brad Snedeker at 8,400. Bubba Watson at 75 and Charlie Hoffman at 6,600. Sorry, one more. Cameron Champ. So this one went 10K and above. So 10K. Two eights, two sevens, and a six. So another interesting way to build a lineup. It's still 
follows the 1098776 and makes a couple uh, substitutions. I think it just makes one. It goes from a nine down to an eight. And that's because John Rahm is 11,300. Now, if he was in the 10K range, maybe you could get up to like a Tony Finau at $9,300. But obviously, too much salary used, can't do that. Now, the Sweet Spot Optimal, which I think during this year was just including all golfers that finished inside the top 10, because obviously one of the Optimal lineup guys finished in 16th place, was going 11, two eights, a seven and two sixes. So another interesting way to build a lineup, but leaving $1,000 on the table, that's kind of difficult to do. Still, it worked out. Your GPP winning lineup, however, use 11, nine, eight, seven, seven, six. So again, starting 10, nine, eight, seven, seven, six, that's how the GPP, uh, well, that's why the user won a GPP following that strategy strategy structure in 2021 our optimal lineup left 500 dollars on the table and our gpp winning lineup left 100 dollars on the table now your optimal started with a 10k golfer nine eight eight six six which is extremely interesting again still following the 10 9 8 7 7 6 model but subbing up one seven to a six and then subbing the other seven down to another six that's how i would look at this so hey again each of these lineups are already starting with a 10k except for the one year but you still would insert a 10k um, to get a more realistic lineup because i think that one you know leaving 2200 dollars on the table in 2018 wasn't the way to go but in tw you know, if you were to use a more realistic lineup, you still start with Justin Rose at 10,600. So keep that in mind. Now your GPP winning lineup during that year, also again, use a 10, goes 10, 9, 8, two eights again, a six and a seven, a low 7K golfer. So to repeat that, that was a 10, 9, 8, 8, 7, 6 start when building lineups. So you're already kind of seeing like double eights and the kind of like, Kind of interesting. I don't like the 8K range this week. We'll get into that a little bit later, but hey, it, this might be a time to do it. And if you needed a reason to play John Rahm at his $11,600 price tag, seeing how many 8Ks, you know, are in the optimal lineup or a GPP winning lineup over the last few years at this event, I should say, kind of gives you reason to play John Rahm this week. Okay, so the last year, 2022... Optimal lineup left $1,000 on the table. Probably not super easy to get to. But, of course, we start with a 10. We go down to a 9. And then it's a 7, 7, 7, 6. So 10, 9, 3, 7s, and a 6. So again, still follows that 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 6 model. Your GPP winning lineup. Well, let me just actually go back to the sweet spot optimal. So sweet spot optimal, we would actually remove just a 7K to another 7K to get a, a better, like a closer salary to the, the salary cap. So instead of leaving $1,000 on the table, we leave $100 on the table. It doesn't change anything. Still is a 10, 9, 3, 7, and a 6. Your GPP winning lineup was a 10, 9, 7, 7, 7, 6. So again, same thing. But it's still, again... I mean, you kind of see it every single every single year here at the Farmers Insurance Open. I already heard a couple podcasts this week talk about how they don't want to go to the 6K range, but I'm sorry. Have we not gone over uh, most of these GPP winning lineups as well as these optimal lineups having a 6K golfer in it? Like very rarely do you not have a 6K golfer in either one of the lineups. So again, I think you still want to target a 6K golfer don't fall in love with one. That's always been my, my piece of advice. Don't fall in love with the 6K range. Just pick a golfer at random. Keep your exposures less than 5%. And I think you're going to be just fine. So if you make 10 lineups, have 10 unique 6K golfers in your lineup. And I think you, you know, have, you'll have a better chance of winning GPP doing it that way than just only having 7K golfers. You know, not, or I should say this, having the absence of a 6K golfer in your lineup. So... I think you start with a 10K. I also think you put a 6K and then just fill it in with whatever works for you. 
I think that's a, a, a good way to do it. And again, we follow the 1098776 and make two substitutions. And that, that's it. Very rarely are you going to have three 8K golfers in an optimal winning lineup. Very rarely are you going to have three 9K golfers in an optimal lineup. So, you know, maybe stay away from something like that. But you could go from a 10 down to a 9, have two 9s, an 8, maybe have three 7s. Maybe you have a 9, 9, 8, 8, two 7s, and a 6. You could do something like that. No, you can't do that. 9, 9, 8, 8, a 7, and 6. Or maybe just two 7s. Maybe that works if the salary allows it. Either way, I think you still start with a 10K golfer because we see it inside the optimal, or you see it in the optimal lineup or the GPP winning lineup every single week. So that concludes our pass optimal lineups and GPP winning lineup section. Let's go ahead and review the American Express and first take a look at the buckets. So what I like to do is track how successful they are every single week. Now, we didn't have recent form buckets, so you're going to see that right away. You're going to see a bunch of no's. I'm actually going to filter that out. So when we take a look at the buckets, now the recent form bucket had six buckets, right? There's 36 usually in total. We take the recent form buckets out. We only have 30. When we take a look at this column here, this is me tracking, you know, how many golfers from that bucket were in the optimal lineup as well as the sweet spot optimal and kind of comparing it to my projections that I had for last week. If it fits within the projection, it was a successful bucket. Now we had 30 buckets last week, 28 of them were successful. Only two failed. Now I can actually make two arguments here. I'm going to hide this so I can bring in a little piece of the miscellaneous information. When I take a look at the upper 6K bucket, because on the optimizer, I had the set to zero to two. You can see that the projection says zero to one right here. Now, my more conservative number is actually saying, hey, you want an, you do want up to two high 6K golfers. With that being said, we had two in the optimal lineup. This bucket would be successful if we use the sweet spot score. And of course, I never not leave a two point gap. And I know that's kind of weird to say, but I'll always have a two point gap. So if, if the minimum projection is zero, it'll always be between zero to two. I leave a two point gap because you need a little bit of uh oh, I forget what the word is called. It's, it's a, it's a budget word. You need like a little gap of whatever. So either way, I want a two point gap. It bothers me. We can't think of words when you want to. Uh, the only other bucket that failed was our course history too. And that fail failed. Like that wasn't uh, that's not something I'm going to be able to tell you. Oh no, you know, a conservative number. Actually, this one worked. No, that one failed. However, Building a lineup following the sweet spot process, I can go ahead and, and show this on the screen. Um, what I, so I reran this in the optimizer from last week and I kept the strict bucket conditionals here. Let me pull it up. I did this last week too. I should have already had this ready for you. It doesn't take long. Thankfully, the new computer loads everything super fast. It makes things so easy on my life. Love it. So let me zoom in. You can see some noise over to the side. That's just me kind of playing around with stuff. So if I were to remove all of this and I put in my strict conditions, so this is how I also find the optimal lineup, by the way. I just, you know, top down, put the highest DK scores, and then put the, the minimums to zero, the maximum to zero. It's going to get me the optimal lineup. So that's my easy way to find the optimal lineup. I, I love this optimizer. However, if I put in these strict conditionals and I copy and paste these here and rerun the optimizer based off of everything we talked about last week and I, you know, we take a look at this lineup. Um, hmm, that's not correct. Oh. What what is missing? Oh, I copied this wrong. This is not supposed to be a one. Uh-oh. I know what I did. <laughs> I copied it wrong. It needs to be up here. I had it in the wrong cells. There we go. Wow, that was scary because it was like, that's this isn't anywhere close. Uh, I need to reset my minimum salary because what I was doing last week was 49000 and above. Of course, I always advocate don't leave a lot of money on the table. 
you know, try to keep it within 500 bucks. So here is our true sweet spot optimal using $49,300. So we're leaving $700 on the table, scored 815.5 points. I didn't like this lineup. Um, and it didn't really follow everything that I was trying to do. I'm trying to figure out what it was that I, I ended up doing, that I changed. Um, how did I get to Rose? Let me double check something quick. So, because it, it, it included Rose. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. Okay, okay, okay. In all reality, what I wanted to do was 49.5. I don't want to leave, like, I didn't want to leave $700 on the table, so I re-ran this. I think this is when Rose gets pulled in. Yep. So this one scored 813.5 points following the sweet spot metrics, all the conditionals that I had in the optimizer. Obviously, you just saw the last one scored 815.5. So it's a two-point difference. Now, if I were to go and look at Ron Klosses, which, hey, by the way, Ron, congratulations. Anyone that doesn't know Ron, that's PGA Splits 101. He's done a lot of great data on Twitter. Uh, I love the spreadsheets that he does. What I was joking, or I, I'll also plug another guy, uh, the model maniac, Byron. I was on his show earlier today, and we were talking about this very thing. The Sweet Spot Optimal, again, scored 813.5 points. The GPP winning lineup, from last week scored 810. So that we still using the sweet spot process, take down a GPP. When I think of that, or when I say that, when we look back at the bucket system, that means this bucket was a yes. And this bucket was a yes. The entire sweet spot process was hundred percent on point last week. So we still can take down a GPP regardless of not finding golfers inside the top 10. So that's a huge thing. Which, of course, then also, I mean, we just already started talking about it. Might as well get into the optimal versus the GPP winning lineup. Again, Ron Kloss won, which was wonderful. He won the $5. He left $100 on the table. And he scored 810 points. Now, the optimal left $200 on the table. That scored 863 points. So there's a 50-point difference between the optimal and the GPP winning lineup, which is pretty close. That's pretty good. Uh, again, the sweet spot optimal still beats it out. And your GPP winning lineup was John Rahm at $11,000, Cam, Cam Davis, Davis Thompson at $6,900, Montgomery at $89, Chris Kirk at $75, Hadwin at $82, and Dietrich at $76. So Ron went with a 10, two eights, two sevens, and a 6K golfer. That was his lineup. So that still follows that 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 6 model with up to two substitutions. He did one substitution. He went from a 9 down to an 8, and that was it. Uh, and your GPP winning lineup goes 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 6, which is kind of what we discussed last week in the preview video. We noticed that there were, th there were three combinations that kept showing up, and it always... Well, it always included either a 7K or a 6K. It was like you started, you wanted to start with a, a 10K golfer, and then you wanted some combination of 776, 777, or 766. And obviously, that's what we see here. It went 766 with the optimal lineup. So I think what we can do going to the Farmers Insurance Open is kind of still use this type of thought process when it comes to building lineups. Now, the bucket system was great last week. What was also equally as good was the marquee tea times, or I should say were the marquee tea times. English, come on. Now, I there were there were in groups of two. Cantley was with Shoffley, Scheffler was with Fino. You can see all of these groups. Uh, an easier way to follow along would also be just looking at the game numbers here. You know, they're paired up together, so you see the, the game numbers. And then you can also see my group ranks. Now, the top nine groups in uh, a tournament, for me, are your marquee tee times. And usually what we want to find is you want to select two golfers from the marquee tee times. Somewhere between two to four, I should say. So at least two. 
And the only other rule to go with that is don't grab golfers from the same group. Now, we only have groups of two, so it's basically just select one. But if we had groups of three, don't select more than one. You can go up to two. That'd be fine. It doesn't happen all that often, but just try to stick to one. So as you can see, Xander and Patrick, you pick Xander. JT and Harmon, you pick JT Poston. Sorry, JT Poston. And then John Rom, Ricky Fowler, you go with John Rom. Three golfers from the Marquee TSMs were in the optimal lineup. So this was a success as well. And I was skeptical. Don't get me wrong. I didn't like the fact that there were only two golfers. But in a way, I guess that's not terrible. You know, when you're paired up with three golfers, a lot, sometimes rhythm gets broken that way. When you're with two guys, like Rom with Fowler, like that's a pretty good group. Who do, Like when you think of these two golfers, you might not like John Rom's fiery nature. But when you see them kind of just chatting it up, you know they're friends, or they at least aren't enemies. Let's put it that way. So they enjoy each other's company. Patrick Cantley and Xander Shoffley, best friends on the tour. They're paired up together. To me, I, I really liked Cantley that week. But hey, if you needed a reason to pivot off of Cantley, going to Shoffley was another good reason because they're playing together. You get picked up by your group. You know, people draft off of each other. Golfers draft off each other. And a... Uh, JT Poston was with Brian Harmon. A lot of people really liked Brian Harmon last week. I kind of didn't. Maybe that's a reason why you get on someone like JT Poston. Like JT Poston showed up in my optimizer a lot. And I had to ignore him. Actually, I had to, excuse me. I had to ignore him and Brian Harmon quite a bit because I didn't want to play too much of either of them. Well, it would have been a good choice to go with Poston over Harmon. Uh, so anyways, it all worked out. Another kind of piece to evaluate here. There was a lot of conversation as to which starting uh, start, starting course you wanted your players to start at. This is where I probably, um, I don't want to use the word handicapped because it's not really, I mean, it's, it's kind of dug myself into a hole by going too deep on this analysis because during the live video, someone pointed out, hey, what I've noticed is in the top 10, most golfers finish their third round at the stadium course. So you had to figure out the rotation. Remember the last week was a three course rotation. You had the La Quinta country club, the Nicholas tournament course, as well as the, uh, the stadium course. So finishing the stadium course on a Saturday seemed to be a big benefit. So you had to figure out the rotation and it went from La Quinta to Nicholas tournament to the stadium course. That was the rotation. So obviously you wanted golfers to start at La Quinta. Well, your top five golfers started at La Quinta. So even deep diving deep into it, you could have got on some of these guys and that makes sense. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have to talk to Byron about this. Look at this. Look at this. Your GPP winning lineup went Rom, Davis Thompson, both at La Quinta, Chris Kirk, Taylor Montgomery, both at La Quinta, Adam Hadwin at La Quinta, and Justin Rose at La Quinta. All six golfers started at La Quinta. They all finished at the stadium course on Saturday, and they're your GPP winning lineup golfers. Holy crap. I didn't even notice that. This is the first time seeing it. I didn't even put two and two together. Um, I will say this. So you have an optimal lineup golfer, Matthias, uh, Matthias Schmid, who started at the stadium course. I knew you needed at least one. You want to know what else I, kn I knew? The guy that started at the stadium course missed the cut the week before. That's Those are the weeds I got myself into. So that is what he did, the Sony Open. Now, if I were to go ahead and put some filters on this, uh, by the way, I'm still freaking out about the whole La Quinta thing. Like, there are so many lineups you can, I mean, there are a limited amount of lineups you can build that way, over 49,000. If you went all La Quinta, holy crap. I have to talk to Byron about that. Um, and so we go stadium course here and go salary top to bottom. I knew one guy from, from this range was going to be uh, in the top 10. You want to know who I went with just by looking at these names? I should say I didn't really go with them as an anchor play, but I played more than, than others. David Lingmurth. It just seemed like a good spot for him. Had some really good lineups. I, like the, the bulk of my lineups had Lingmurth in it.
So that was extremely disappointing. Uh, the rest of these guys, I kind of just played sparingly. Uh, I don't think I really had anyone over 2%, if I'm being honest. So I'm trying to think. I think I had a lot of a few Lucas Glover lineups, a few Brandon Wu lineups. Obviously, they missed the cut. Uh, I kind of avoided Robbie Shelton, but it would have been a good reason to get on Robbie Shelton. And Alex Smalley, I probably played quite a bit, as well as Keith Mitchell, which none of that really panned out to be anything worthwhile. So it's disappointing that there was Matisse Schmid there. Again, this is where you can really galaxy brain yourself and overthink things still worked out I, and that was one like one little nugget i found wednesday night when i was building lineups like ooh, i need a golfer from from here and i think i wanted more of a 6k golfer than than anything and i just totally passed up on matthias schmidt which of course you would because it's matthias schmidt you don't know much about him um another thing that i was thinking about too was i wanted one missed cut from last week period and i went more so with tom kim than i went with any of any of the other golfers so even regardless of them starting at the stadium course, I kind of, I didn't, I didn't make sure I had at least one golfer in every single of my lineup that followed those conditions, but I did have at least one guy who missed the cut the week before. I made sure of that. So anyways, that's the review. I'm not going to go any further than that. I just thought that was really interesting to point out was the fact that, you know, La Quinta was where you wanted to grab golfers from. And it wasn't even your top guys. Cause that was kind of the conversation piece throughout the week was, well, yeah. So for TV purposes, that Saturday round of golf, they wanted your marquee tee times, the best golfers in the field to play the stadium course. Cause they already had cameras set up there. It was easier to, you know, to show them on TV. So that's what you wanted. That's how this tournament will always be is putting your best golfers on the the uh, the main golf course on the two days of broadcasting during the weekend, so obviously that made sense, and and that's why you have John Rahm up there. That's why you have Xander up there. They're two 10k golfers. That's why you have Taylor Montgomery, who's a stud in his own right, and Tom Kim. Like, yeah, that's why you have all those looking to golfers on there. But either way, the GPP winning lineup had all looking to golfers that weren't inside the top ten. The optimal lineup had its fair share of. La Quinta golfers, you had four right there, and then you had one Nicholas tournament course and one stadium course, which in my optimizer, I had provided that down here. Like I used group one, two, and three. It was set up like this. It was six, six, one. Uh, and I made sure it didn't select one of those, but I made sure it selected one Nicholas tournament course and two um, stadium course guys. Uh, I shouldn't say this. Group one was La Quinta, as you can see here. Group two was Nicholas Tournament and group three was Stadium Course. This is their starting course on Thursday. So I had it set up like that where it was only going to select one. Getting to Matthias Schmidt's pretty difficult. So either way, it's kind of exciting. I have to watch this video next year to just see everything that I put into, you know, this week with uh, analysis and stuff to figure this out for next year because I was on the right track. I, I anchored around... Patrick Cantlay and Tom Kim. I should have really just anchored around John Rahm and Tom Kim. If I wanted to go that, that Kim route, that'd have been easy. Or maybe I just don't. Maybe I don't really look into the last week miscut and just play each one of them kind of evenly. That way I could maybe get some exposure to a Matthias Schmid that makes lineup building a little easier when he's a $6,600 price tag. Anyways, that concludes the review video. With that, let's get right into the bucket system to show you what stats you want to target around. Uh, let's go ahead and close down the American Express. Get right into the Farmers Insurance Open. And again, let's start talking about the buckets for this week. We're going to include all six stat categories. So that means we're bringing in recent form. So we have all 36 buckets at our disposal. Let me go ahead and hide some of this information. A lot of this is just noise for you. Hide all of this and talk about the remaining buckets. Now, one quick thing I like to do this in every video is I'm looking at my projections. I project what I think will happen from each bucket. Uh, and what I mean by that is I'm trying to project how many golfers from each of these buckets will finish inside the top 10. So the very first thing you want to do is look at your minimums and round down. I want to give you the raw numbers so you can see it for your own visual evidence. So this last year, one bucket 
it says your minimum projection is 1.84. In all honesty, round that down to one. So your minimum projection is one. Don't round up to two. On the flip side of that, your max projection here for last year one bucket is 3.06. Round that up to four. So four is the ultimate max amount of golfers you want from this bucket to be in your lineups. Of course, we also will need to investigate or really like, yeah, investigate who is in that bucket. Because if it's all 10K golfers, you can't put four of these guys in your lineup. You probably only put a max of two. But we'll go ahead and we'll get into that. I just want you to kind of understand, you know, before we get into this, that your minimum projection you, round, you want to round down and your max projection you want to round up. Now, there's also this other max projection bucket over here, or column, I should say. This is incorporating the sweet spot score. So I don't have those in these projections. These projections are using the success rate as well as how many golfers are in the bucket this year versus uh, what it is on average. And it kind of, oh, and it provides the strength of field number in there as well. Um, let me go back. It does not include average per year. I don't know why I said that. It includes the success rate, how many golfers are in the bucket this year as well as strength of field. Or that bucket so obviously the more quality golfer is of that bucket we kind of want to boost that bucket up regardless of what has happened there in, in years past so that's how i get these projections well when you include the sweet spot score into all of that as well our projection our max projections might be a little bit different so keep that in mind because again if you round up from 2.69 you only get three where our original max projection 3.06 rounds up to four how i look at at something like this is minimum is one, max is four regardless. And if I'm anchoring around something or if I'm making sure I'm putting, you know, golfers from this bucket in my lineup, I never exceed the conservative max projection of three. I'll let the optimizer maybe select a fourth guy, but I'm setting my conditionals one to four. That is how my projection will look like. So keep that in mind as we go through this. Let's go ahead and start with the last year bucket. So again, if you're following along with me on the cheat sheet, again, go to file, make a copy, go to the bucket system portion of that cheat sheet and put a filter on here. And we're only looking at last year buckets. This way I can eliminate the noise that you guys see on your end and not confuse you with all the colors and stuff. We're only looking at the last year buckets. And by far and away, the bucket that sticks out the most are golfers who top 20 from this, this event last year. That is the number one bucket when it comes to projections, how many golfers that I think will finish inside the top 10, but it's also probably a bucket you want to start at when building your lineups. There are only, only 14 golfers from that, uh, that are in this bucket that top 20 last year. On average, we see around 19.5. Even with 14, we're projecting somewhere between one to four to finish inside the top 10. Meaning you want to grab somewhere between one to four. Take a look who those golfers are. And again, you can follow along with me on this as well. Put that DraftKings filter on there and look at our last year one bucket. We're going to clear that out and only look at ones. Well, John Rom leads it off. Do I think John Rom is going to win three tournaments in his last three starts? Yeah, I think so. Honestly, I think, man, I, I was alluding to this on the Fantasy Golf Pod last week. Um... I think I was at least if not, maybe it was in my head, but either way, I think this is going to be a, uh, this is a potential year of dominance for John Rom. And that's not just like using recency bias. I was kind of feeling this after his win at the tournament of champions. I'm like, okay, that was impressive on its own because it wasn't, it looked easy to him and he's playing with all the best golfers in the world. Then he goes to the American Express and is just, you know, Davis Thompson was dominating that tournament. He was shooting these low scores, had like, gosh, what was it? Five Eagles on the par fives in the first three rounds. He it just didn't look like anyone was going to catch him. But slowly but surely, here comes John Rahm going up. You know, I think he had a three shot deficit or something like that going into Sunday's round, if I remember correctly. Uh, and he takes down Davis Thompson. I don't like everyone wants to compare John Rahm's numbers to like Tigers to some extent. I still think I'm not going to do that, but I think Rahm can be a dominating golfer on this tour. 
it's kind of it kind of stinks because we don't see a lot of McElroy. I would love to watch a McElroy Rom, you know, duo in these types of tournaments. I'd love to see them at the tournament champions. I'd love to see him here. You know, but but obviously we don't get that. And what's kind of funny about all this is without the or with the absence of Rory. Rom, it's just our our recency bias of it is like he's the best golfer in the world. And it's hard to argue against that. The guy makes winning. I mean, last week at the towards the end of the tournament, it almost made it look hard. But he's still such an all around golfer. And not only is his driving amazing. Maybe uh, this was a funny thing that Byron and I were talking about during our uh, during his podcast was like Rom's wedge game. He overspins wedge shots, which I get when you are not hitting off speed wedge shots like Justin Thomas does. And you're going full on out on every single one of your swings. That's where you kind of come into very high spin type of shots. And if that's what he's doing with his wedges, it's not really good. And that might be a detriment to him at the North course. But guess what? This guy's short game is second. I mean, it, we can, we can, you know, analyze his stats when it comes to around the green, but just technique when you, the eyeball test using just technique, Looking at how he plays hard golf courses, whether it's a major championship or one of these marquee events like the Memorial Tournament, which he's done very well at, his, his game all around is second to none. And that I'm also including Rory McIlroy in. McIlroy is good, don't get me wrong. But put it this way. If I'm comparing Rom and McIlroy, McIlroy is a better driver than Rom is, but barely, right? Their approach game is very similar. Around the green, I give the advantage to Rom. And putting, I give the advantage to Rom as well. Now, if we're on Bermuda type of golf courses, I give that advantage to Rory, because I think Rory plays better on Bermuda than Rom does. But if you're comparing them together, I would give a slight advantage to Rom, because I think he has an all around better game. Now, driving alone, you know, because I think. Okay, let me write it out in numbers. I'll go quick. Rory's a 10 at driving. Rom is like an 8.5. May right, let's give him a 9. I'll give him a 9. When we're just comparing these guys, by the way, I'm not using this against the, the rest of the field. Approach. I give them both 10s. Again, it's just those two. I'm using those two. Around the green, I give Rom a 10, and I give Rory an 8.5. And putting, I give them both. Well, actually, I give Rom like a 10 and I give Rory a 9.5. So I'm going to go back to driving. I give Rory a 10 and I give uh, Rom an 8.5. So when you tally those all up, Rom has a higher score. Now, when driving becomes more paramount, where you can put yourself into better positions, I would trust Rory over Rom. But Rom is no slouch. I mean, what is his strokes gain off the T stats? Both uh, recent form as well as... Um, Overall, so 0.87 or 0.867 over the last two weeks, you know, that includes the tournament champions. And this, of course, I think, it, well, actually, no, these are my own stats, so they're not adjusted. Um, and then season long, 0.944, still pretty good. And you can see in this, this bucket alone, he's better than anyone else. When you look at his recent form stats, you know, he has what, uh, Justin Rose. With one event. Yeah, it was one event. That's better than him. But that's it. Oh, uh, and Luke List. And that's also just one event. Believe. Maybe not. Maybe that's two events. That's all, maybe the Sony Open as well. So, Rom still off the tee, super good. And again, when I'm comparing it to Rory, I'm giving Rory obviously high marks for, for driving. But, in a field like this, I don't think anyone touches, like, no one's close to Rom. And his $11,600 price tag, I think, is pretty darn good. Like, it's appropriate. I was saying this to Byron during, uh, during his podcast. It's appropriate. This is where he should be priced, $11,600. This is great. But let's say you have a game theory aspect to it or whatever. You don't want to play Rom. Then you're, you're your selection of other golfers. Probably not even looking at the 6K range. I'm also not looking at Aaron Rye or Ryan Palmer, but I'm looking at the rest of the guys here. So Taylor Pendrith on up. 
I think are all really good choices. To me, it's an interesting uh, Jason Day and Justin Rose. Okay, going back to the, the projections, one to four. And remember I was talking about, well, if there are a bunch of 10K golfers in this bucket, then it'll be hard to choose. I think getting closer to three is what you want to go with, which makes building lineups kind of easy. So if you're going ROM at 11,600, you can go down to Will Zalatoris kind of easy. You could go to Justin Thomas. You could go to Sung JM, and you could go to Taylor Montgomery. I really like Taylor Montgomery. But if you even didn't like that, and you wanted to go from 10 down to 8, going with Jason Day and Justin Rose, I only had an issue. And Taylor Pendrith, don't sleep on him. This is a perfect golf course for him. Uh, let's just double check something. I want to look at his strokes gain off the tee stats. So this is interesting. Minus three. That has to be strictly from. Yeah, so it's strictly from last week's tournament. I wonder why he lost three strokes. Like diving into that will be really important. But overall, he is gaining 0.7 strokes on off the tee, which is second to John Rahm. So it's very important to point that out. He's a good driver of the golf ball and hitting the ball off the tee well at this tournament is, I think, very paramount. Approach stats look pretty good, but then a short game looks kind of bad. If we're just looking for birdies, we don't really worry about these stats. We just kind of hope that he beats the mean or he just he plays better uh, than this. And at $7,900, I think that's a pretty good price tag. So either way, you want one to four of these golfers, and it's hard to ignore Rom. Rom seems like the, the easy choice. Moving to our next couple buckets. I'm actually going to go fast through these. I'm not going to give uh, quite the breakdown. When the max projection is not over two, the minimum projection automatically goes to zero. I want to stress that uh, a bunch because I think we're going to see that here quite a bit. So really, this projection should be zero to two. And especially when the conservative max projection isn't greater than two, we just keep it zero to two. And your last year, two golfers are the following. Xander Shoffley, Hideki Matsuyama, Sith Tagala, Maverick McNeely, and JJ Spawn for the 8K and above golfers. I'm not really going to talk about a lot of these guys, but again, you want somewhere between 0 to 2. And with that being said, there are already question marks with Xander. Sure, he finished really well last week. He also just had a back issue, a back issue not too long ago. Does that flare up? He's going to colder weather here. We're at the desert. It's warmer weather that with very little wind. This course is actually harder to walk than the uh, the American Express golf courses. Does that play a factor in Xander? I think I'm still okay fading Xander. I faded him last week. I'm okay fading him this week. Uh, and then the rest of the guys, I mean, it's zero to two is a projection. I could literally fade these guys and be just fine with it. There are some interesting names like Matsuyama, Thigala, and McNeely. I'm probably staying away from JJ Spawn. Don't really care too much for that. And then the rest of the cast, I don't see a reason to play any of these guys. Like, I'll, I'll probably set my exposures for each of these golfers at like 10% and below. I'm certainly not anchoring around any of these golfers. So keep that in mind. The next bucket are last year's three golfers. That's that 40 to 60 range, and we're projecting 0 to 1. Remember, I always round up, like, I always want a two-point gap. So really, this is 0 to 2, but I'm not confident with this bucket. Last year, threes starts with Cam Davis, which we'll talk about the last week, Bucky's he's, he's uh, no, no, no. He's actually in a good spot. I like Cam Davis this week, uh, but not a for certain bucket to select golfers from. So keep that in mind. And really when it's zero to two, when the, the raw number was one, the max projection was one. I wouldn't want to play two, two of these golfers. I think you just stick to one. You know, whether that's Alex Smalley, if it's if it's him, then you avoid the rest of these guys. If it's Cam Davis, then you, you know, again, you avoid the rest of the guys. Same with Wyndham Clark. Just pick one and move on. But if two really, really, really talk to you, you're OK. It's fine. Just don't select three or more. That would be uh, not not good. Going to the next one, last year fours again, zero to one. But, you know, two point buffer. That's what it's called. It's a buffer. Two point buffer, we want to uh, again project up to two, but really pay, play it safe. You've got Keegan Bradley here, 
Patrick Rogers. Yeah, I, I'm playing zero to one. I don't care if it's two. That's just the conservative number. I'm probably really just playing zero of, of these golfers. I, I don't mind playing like a Bramlett or any of these guys, but it's very, very limited. Maybe 1%. I will, you know, if I'm creating 100 lineups, these guys might be in just one of those lineups, you know, each. Like I'm not putting, I'm certainly not pairing any of these guys up together, but I'm also not playing any of these golfers more than 4% of my lineups. I did say one just recently, but 4%. Just not going to do it. So I'm not anchoring around someone like Keegan Bradley. I also don't even want to see Keegan Bradley that much in my lineups. Same goes with Patrick Rogers, although he has decent ties here. Went to college here in California. Um, yeah, I'm probably staying away. Joseph Bramlett seems interesting. Two, you know, home state is California. His college state's California. Not a terrible reason to select him. But yeah, let's just kind of just steer clear of this bucket. Maybe just do a random pick here. You know, that's that's fine. Looking at our last year fives, this is your missed cut from last year. And this is actually one to three, although the max projection is two. The conservative max projection is two, which really means, again, we want a two-point buffer. The true projection is zero to three, which is scary because what was originally one as your minimum is now zero, meaning anyone, meaning none of these golfers can finish inside the top ten. And that starts with Tony Finau. And it also includes Max Homa, which is hard to believe that neither just those two golfers alone couldn't finish inside the top 10. Again, we're projecting up to three. So I don't mind saying you can select one, but I want you to be cognizant that there's not a lot of confidence that you're going to have at least one from this bucket inside the top 10, which is kind of insane because it's a pretty big bucket. There are 38 total golfers in it. Okay, if there's some solace to take into this, we do have 100% frequency rate, which means at least one golfer every single year that I've been tracking this has finished inside the top 10. So that's, that's some comfort to select at least one. So with that being said, is it one of these top guys? And if it is, you get to remove 35 golfers from your from your bucket or from your player pool. You don't even have to consider playing any of these guys. When it comes to building lineups, I might actually stick to that, honestly. I might just only have zero to two from here. And I'll tell you one thing. I'm really considering anchoring around Tony Finau with my, cons my uh, discussion with Byron, the model maniac. He actually values out better than Rom at his price tag. Tony Finau, that is. So when I calculate all the, the sweet spot rankings, all the points that go into the sweet spot ranks, his ranking, or I should say his score, is actually closer to John Rom's as opposed to his salary, which means his value is better than John Rom's. And now they could both be overpriced, but I do think Rom is appropriately priced. Finau could probably be like 10-8. And, and I still, that would be an interesting conversation to have, an $800 difference. So when we just talk about value, Finau is a, a good value compared to Rom. It's just, do you, do you fade Rom just, just because? It, it's hard. And honestly, if you did want to select one guy from here, if you started with Rom and you want to do that 10 9 8 7, 7, 6 approach, Max Homa seems like a very, very uh, obvious selection to go with because the rest of these guys are just dart throws. I, I mean, you could actually cross out some of these guys down here at the 6K range and below. I mean, I, I, Byron was talking about Austin Cook. I, didn't like, I don't like Austin Cook. He is on my blacklist, but the rest of these guys, pretty pitiful, honestly, when it comes to considering lineup construction. So you can already remove 10 guys from here and you just talk about the remaining 20, 28 golfers. Uh, I wouldn't include Austin Cook. So the remaining 27. I do like Lee Hodges this week, by the way. He is in my dummy lineup, which I just, you know, reserve all my line, all my contests with. His name just immediately when I saw him, I'm like, yeah, I think Lee Hodges would be a pretty decent golfer at this event. So actually, I want to look at his off the tee stats because to me, that's more important here than anything. 
And it doesn't look good, guys. Okay. His season long is 0 0.105. So off the tee, not super great. How far do we hit it? 298. So middle of the pack. Not terrible. You go with like someone like Colum Terran or Pat Kazar that hit it, you know, about seven yards further. Or you go down to Kevin Yu, who also hits it about seven yards further. So you could do those, and that would be fine. Kind of looking at all the driver distances. Again, this is available on the cheat sheet, which again you can find in the link to uh, a link in the description below. Yeah, I probably don't want to touch most of these golfers. I think I just want to stick with kind of the elite guys. So like Max Homa to me kind of seems like a a very. I mean Max Homa, Kurt Kitayama. I do like Kurt Kitayama this week. Um. Ricky Fowler's averaging 308 yards off the tee. That's pretty good for Ricky. Pretty good. Anyways, not going to go further than that. This is a very volatile bucket that you have to be very aware of. The next one are our last year's sixes. The projection is really low for this bucket, despite having at least two golfers every single year from this bucket finish inside the top 10. And these are golfers who didn't play the year before. So... What this is telling me is there's just not a lot of quality golfers in here, especially when 45 points make up the strength of field for this bucket. Yeah, it's not super great. Uh, it's actually fourth ranked when it comes to strength of field. There are 67 golfers in this bucket, which you play the numbers. We're going to have at least one guy from here finish inside the top 10, right? Has to. Well, let's see who those golfers are. Colin Morikawa leads that bucket. And then it drops down to the 7K range. So if you really want to play game th theory based off the buckets. Personally, I don't think Colin Morikawa is going to be very popular. I'd be very surprised if he was. With that being said. Um, the other buckets, I would rather play Finau and Rom over Colin Morikawa. If that's the case, then... We probably fade. I mean, okay, game theory wise, Kyle Morkow would be your selection. Because I think everyone else goes to Rom or Finau. Morkow is going to be sitting there by himself. And it, you could use the buckets as leverage. So yeah, Kyle Morkow wouldn't be a bad choice. However, I like someone way, 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 way more than Morikawa in this event for the lineups I can create. And that's Thomas Dietrich. So Thomas Dietrich's 10th in my model, which is pretty impressive. If we look at his stat profile, probably not going to see a lot of things I hate, but I kind of already do. I don't like the off the tee stat from last week. Um, still, even recent form, was that the same number? No, it isn't. So he did get better. Now, last week was bad. The last two events, the Sony Open, I think he played at was probably even, I'm assuming. Overall, though, yeah, 0.381. Not super great, but the guy hits the ball far. So I have no issue with that. Yeah, 315 yards off the tee. He's just not accurate. You can see. Your off the tee stat incorporates driving distance and accuracy. I would say you want to be accurate at this event, but also hitting the ball far means you'll have shorter irons into the green. Shorter irons are easier to hit out of the rough. And also having strength and power makes it easier to hit out of the rough as well. Now, if I'm being quite honest with you, I would much rather see a golfer that has better off the tee stats. And I'm looking at season long. I don't care about recent form or kind of differences. And wow. So like Brendan Steele kind of pops out 0.75. That's pretty decent. Matthias Schmid that I was talking about with Byron on, on the podcast, 0.569. That's pretty good. That's over the last year. That's Those are good stats. Will Gordon is another good choice. I do like him. And Dean Burmester seems pretty decent as well. And you could go back to last week's Davis Thompson. Those aren't terrible off the tee stats either. Or you could also just go with Morikawa. It seems like a, a very viable decision. But those wrap up the last year buckets. Let's go ahead and get into the last week buckets. Right? Okay. Let's talk about the last week buckets. Last week one. We want somewhere between one to three. 
and that still upholds with our conservative max projection. So let's take a look at those golfers. Again, we want somewhere between one to three. So from last week, these are your golfers who finished inside the top 20 at the American Express. Uh, if we were to actually kind of dive into that analysis, we've always seen one the week before the farmers finish inside the top 20 to finish inside the top 10 at the farmers. That's how this bucket reads. Normally we see about 16 golfers in that bucket. We have 14 this week. It's a good chance, and the in the projections are are really good. Uh, figuring out that this is a, this is a bucket you want to select a golfer from. This is where I think you anchor your lineups around. So, B now finished inside the top twenty. Interesting. So he finished sixteenth, which whatever. It is what it is. Still top twenty. But yeah, you have some decisions to make here at at the top between some 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 ten k golfers. Rom, Finau, Shoffley. Who you don't see there is Morikawa. Obviously, he didn't play last week. So that's really interesting. Again, you want somewhere between one to three. I can literally see myself building like two or three lineups here. Uh, not two or three lineups. I could put two or three golfers in my lineup pretty darn easily. One being Taylor Montgomery to either pair up with Rom or with Finau. I am going to fade Xander. Uh, I, I'm cool with that. So I think my two that I'm I'm going to anchor around is either Finau or Rom and Taylor Montgomery. And then if I'm going to allow the optimizer to select another golfer, it's going to be one of these guys down here. I'm probably just going to full fade day. Cause that's easy for me to do. He's blacklisted uh, in most of my lineups. And I, I'm only going to play 1% Danny Lee, 1% Harry Higgs. I'll probably bump up my exposure to Matias Schmidt, to like 10, 11, 12%. Same goes with Kazire. I don't care for Higo. I think he just popped last week out of nowhere. That's the type of golfer he is. Thompson and Shelton seem like interesting decisions to make. I still might just go with two and skip the rest of them. But, you know, the fact I can go up to three actually, I think, helps me out. So I am considering all of that information. Okay, so one to three here. Moving on to the next one. Last week, too, he's at 20 to 40 range. So golfers who played last week that finished in between 20th and 40th position, zero to two is our projection. Our conservative projection is actually higher than our, our raw projection. So there's still no real confidence with this bucket, but it does start with Will Zalatoris. That's hard to get away with just by himself. But, ooh, this bucket, this stinks. I won't lie. Because I like Zalatoris, I like Smalley, I like Dietrich, I like Griffin. We just talked about Brennan Steele. I've got four, I've got five golfers that I really like and our max projections too. So we've got to some decisions to make. And I don't know if we anchor around those, those golfers at all. I was thinking about anchoring around Will Zalatoris, but I, I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to leave this bucket open. And when I use the optimizer, just let it select some of these guys at random. Remember the projection zero to two. So that being said, I'll play these golfers at your own risk. I wouldn't play more than two of them. I just stick to one. Yeah. The next one is last week threes. This is that 40 to 60 range. Uh, we're projecting zero to two here as well. And that's headed by Sahith the Gala and then a bunch of seven and six K golfers. So zero to two here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. There are some interesting names like the Gala, Clark Fowler. Um, and like, I like Bramlett. I don't mind Bramlett. This is going to be a low exposure bucket for me. Let's move on to the next one. Last week fours, right? Are we on last week fours or were we just there? Nope. Last week fours zero to one is the raw projection. Remember, we want a two point buffer. So zero to two is the technical projection, but I don't trust this bucket. This is a terrible bucket. Last week, fours. This range, by the way, 40 to 60th, whether it's from the last year bucket or from the last week bucket, it's never a good bucket to choose golfers from. And we have Davis Riley, Martin Laird, uh, Marty Doe, 
Ryan Armour, Paul Haley. The set. Yeah, so a lot of these guys, easy to fade. Really, the only decision, in my opinion, is how much Davis Riley you want in your life. So it's easy bucket for me to fade. And I'd probably just ignore it completely. The next one to look at, missed cuts from last week. How important is that? We're projecting 0-2 to two to finish inside the top 10. And that starts with Cam Davis. And it's got some really, really interesting names. Davis, List, Pendrith, Harris English, Will Gordon. Remember, 0-2 to two is what I'm projecting from this bucket. And there are so many good names. So how in the hell do we select a golfer from here? I mean, not so much just a golfer, but multiple golfers. Zero to two? Is this, I mean, I almost think that the, the, this is wrong. 62 golfers? 62 golfers. Wow. It's just the strength of field that's represented in this bucket is really, really bad. I don't know. What do you guys think? You want to play more than two golfers from this bucket or... You're going to stay with two. Going over these golfers again. I mean, there's some good names. Ham Davis, Luke Liz, Pendrith, English, Gordon, Grillo, Patrick Rogers, Aaron Rye. Hard to say no, but it's what I love about the bucket system. I mean, we could have taken down a GPP following it complete to the T of perfection. Um, and we, yeah, we would have taken it down a GPP. So I think I just stick to two at max. And just venture between zero to two. I don't know what my percentages will be of having at least one guy, at least two guys, or zero guys, but I'm gonna let it do its thing. Maybe I I make sure I have zero, which which I don't really care that much for because Cam Davis is in is is one of my favorite golfers this week. Now I really don't have a lot of uh, confidence in playing him. Moving on to the next one though, the next bucket. Last week's sixes are golfers who did not play. Projection is two to four. I mean, on average, like, I mean, the success rate's super high for this bucket. Our frequency rate is 100%, meaning there's been at least one golfer from this bucket who finishes inside the top 10 every single year. 43 golfers are in that bucket where we normally see 48. It's an easy bucket to choose from. Like, I think you definitely want one, but the projection is two to four. And that remains constant even with the conservative projection. So two to four. Last week's sixes. So meaning you want at least two. Morikawa's up there. Thomas, Homa. Uh, I guess when I see this, I almost think that one of these guys will finish inside the top ten. And it makes me want to anchor around these guys. I can literally see myself already building a Finau or Rom lineup to go with Taylor Montgomery and Max Homa. Homa's a low 9K golfer. Montgomery's a high 8K golfer. So that mixed in with ROM makes salary construction really difficult. But if I can select two four golfers from this bucket, the 7K range and 6K, like high 6K range, I... I no, well, not so much the high 6K range. Okay, I'm going to eat my words. Um... Because I, I don't like a lot of these names. Um, two to four could literally come from right here. And maybe this is the best way to anchor your lineups. I actually, I probably will create 10 lineups anchoring around two of these guys. And skipping Rom, skipping Finau, and skipping our $10,300 golfer, which is escaping my memory right now. Who's that? Xander. Yeah, I'm already fading Xander, so that's fine. Um... But here's some lineup, some game theory that you can actually think of is starting with one of these golfers or starting with two of these golfers that I've highlighted on the screen and then using the buckets for the rest to fill in. Maybe that's a that's probably a good way to start to, to build your lineups. Um, yeah, and some of these other names are, are interesting, too, like Maverick McNeely. This is a good reason to play Maverick. I wasn't even thinking about playing Maverick, but pretty good on POA, 24 percent top 10 Success rate, that's really, really good. Um, Keegan Bradley also, this is one of Byron's picks. Not terrible. Scott Stallings, by the way, that could be forgotten, a forgotten man right here. I don't like his $7,700 price tag, but I'm guessing a lot of other people probably won't either. So maybe a good reason to play him as well. But that's enough talking about the last week's six buckets and the last week buckets in general. 
we can get right into the course history buckets. And look at our projections here. Zero to two course history ones. So not an anchor bucket by any means. But wouldn't you know, John Rahm at the top, then Tony Finau, then Taylor Montgomery, then Taylor Pendrith, which that's like the coup de grace of my lineups because I would start with Rahm, Montgomery, Pendrith in most of my lineups. And it's telling me we want somewhere between zero to two. I mean, so super high success rate, by the way, of having at least, well, it's not even at least. Success rate takes in the total amount of golfers from this bucket dating back to 2015. The total amount. Looking at the top 10 golfers from this bucket. So basically what it's doing is it's looking at the top 10 golfers from this bucket, dividing it by the total amount to get this percentage. That's a really, really, really high percentage. A really high percentage when it comes to buckets of golfers finishing inside the top 10. It's very high. That's one in four. We have seven golfers in that bucket this year. So if we just use the success rate and compare it to how many golfers are in this bucket, like if we just do that math, you want two golfers in your lineup from this bucket. So the projection zero to two, and I shouldn't even say you want zero to two, the projection is zero to two to finish inside the top 10. So if it's not Rom and Finau, then it's one of these two guys and one of these two guys, which opens the door to like another, like a Taylor Montgomery or a Taylor Pendrith. And if you really wanted to game theory this way, maybe you try to choose between the two Taylors and put those in your lineup to pair up with Rom or Finau. So interesting lineup. Again, the high success rate for this bucket. 87% frequency rate. So there's only been one year, only one, where we have not seen at least one golfer inside the top 10 from this bucket. So keep that in mind. We see on average 7.86, we have seven. In the in the field this week so if all things point to success or you know follow suit of uh past years we're gonna see two guys from this bucket inside the top 10. just depends which ones of course history two that 20 to 40 range we want somewhere between one to three or at least that's what we're projecting right so looking at that one small bucket we have 15 total golfers. Morikawa leads this bucket. One to three, remember. I also see Zalatoris, Thomas, Sung JM, Jason Day. Sung Jay just can be completely overlooked, by the way, because I haven't heard a lot so far about him. I really don't care to play Sung Jay, so it might be, you know, not good for me. Seen Bradley and McNeely show up when I haven't really talked about them much, and it's not really by design. I just don't have a lot to talk to uh, about with them. Um, if we see more of a north end of that projection of one to three, it's hard not to think one of these 8K golfers won't finish inside the top 10. And with that being said, you have to make a decision who that's going to be. I'm probably just full fading Keegan. Like, I, I don't really care so much about that. If I had to choose, it'd probably McNeely or Thigala. Uh, and I, again, I do like Will Zalatoris this week. And if you did want to do the whole game theory perspective, Morikawa continues to pop in some of these buckets and I'm kind of just trying to refuse to play them. This is why I like the optimizer because I've kind of already lost track of which buckets Morikawa is good in versus like Taylor Montgomery versus Taylor Pendrith. I know I've said something they've been in the same bucket and you only want one of those guys. I know I said that somewhere down the road, but I don't have to really keep track of it when I have the optimizer. The optimizer does it for me. Again, I'll showcase that in tomorrow's video, in the strategy video. And if you want access to it, you got to be subscribed to this channel. Participate on any of the videos and then email me at sweetspotdfs at gmail.com. But yeah, it's, I, 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 can, I can stay away from these 7K golfers, except for Will Gordon. I do like Will Gordon. Number 12 in my model. Holy moly, $7,400? I didn't even notice that before. So maybe I'm going to be showing Will Gordon a lot of love. Um, that's a really good value. Same goes with uh, Robbie Shelton, by the way. Good value there as well. Let's move on. Going to the next bucket. Course history threes, that 40 to 60 range. The projection's one to four. Now our conservative projection over here for max is 2.69, which rounds up to three. But it's still one to four, which is interesting. And this is usually a bucket that 
has this type of projection every single week when there's course history. Um, it's just your middle range. These are golfers who have top 20 here before, who have missed the cut before. You know, it's it, the averages are between uh, 40th to 60th, 40 to 60 in your course history. You can see that in this bucket right here, 40 to 60. Xander's in this bucket, Matsuyama, Siwoo Kim, JJ Spawn. You can see all the names up here. So we're looking somewhere between one to four. Remember that, one to four, which is it's kind of crazy with when it comes to projections. Interesting names, by the way. I mean, like just the 7K and below range all provides interesting options to, to like really, you know, th this is like the glue of your lineup. You're, you have your two or three guys you know you want to build around. This is the glue that will pull it all in together. One of these golfers in here is going to do it. So, up to you. One to four. I'm projecting to be inside the top ten. Could just be one of these guys. That's it. And that's fine. Um, but maybe it's up to four. You got some choices to make. The next bucket is that course history four bucket. We're projecting zero to two inside the top 10. There are 35 golfers in that bucket where we see usually 30. So it's a decent, you know, volume driven bucket. This bucket is headed by Max Homa. So if there's ever a reason to play Max Homa, this, well, I shouldn't say he's so much a reason, but the projection zero to two. Maybe it gives you a little bit of confidence to play him. Maybe it doesn't. I personally don't care to see zero to two as the projection because that's just saying like, yeah, it's not super great, but I don't know. It's not terrible in my opinion. So I, I don't mind. I really don't mind playing Max Homa. I'll probably ignore the rest of the golfers if I do go with Homa. And if I don't go with Homa, then everyone else is, is live. Let's just put it that way. I, I don't mind playing each one of these guys at least once. Keep that in mind. Going to the next bucket, Course History 5. This is really like missed cuts and withdraws and stuff like that. It's not a really good bucket to, to choose from. 0 to 1 is that raw projection, but again, we want a 2-point buffer, so this is really 0 to 2. And when we're looking at Course History 5, Hayden Buckley leads this bucket. And then it's Kurt Kitayama, Davis Riley. So we've seen Riley in a bunch of bad buckets. Doesn't mean he can't perform well, but it's not looking great. Let's put it that way. It's not looking great. Nick Hardy's in this one. A lot of interesting names. Like, I would... Honestly, so if I were to go top-bottom here, I would, I would play Hayden Buckley. I would play Kurt Kitayama, Davis Riley, Nick Hardy, Callum Terran. Lee Hodges really liked, you know, just, you know, just looking at his name. I want to put him in my lineups. Uh, Taylor Moore, no, he's pretty close to being blacklisted, so I probably don't care. Kevin Yu, I like. Justin Lauer, I don't mind. Harry Hall, I don't mind either. He is the new uh, Bryson with his, I forget what that hat is called, but he likes wearing the, the same hat Bryson wears. Eckroat, he burned me last week. I don't know if I can get back to him, but maybe this is a week to get back to him. We'll see. Probably not, though. Um, and then the rest of the guys, you know, just dart throws, basically. The last bucket to talk about in the course history buckets is the sixth bucket, which is the did not play bucket. This is zero to one. So these are, you know, new. New timers, new timers, is that a word? I think it is. Uh, newcomers, golfers who've never golfed this tournament dating back to uh, since 2013. Really, it's just your rookie golfers. 38 golfers in that bucket. You know, on average, we see 33. Zero to one. Again, it's a two-point buffer. Keep that in mind. If you really wanted to play zero from here, it's totally fine. But this one is headed by Davis Thompson. Thomas Dietrich. Which kind of breaks my heart. Like, I honestly... Dietrich, Burmester, Ben Griffin... Matisse Schmidt, S.H. Kim, even Carl Yuan. He's, and, and Alexander Tyson. Oh. I think when it comes to my own lineup building, I'm just going to put the buckets to 0 to 1. Because I, I don't want to get burned by picking two golfers from this bucket. 
And I would actually rather have a more strict lineup building process this week than open it up to a bunch of people. So, I, I mean, I welcome in as much Thomas Dietrich as I can get. I mean, this is just seems like a really good value. Um, so I'm, I'm okay with that. And then the rest of the guys, whatever. I, 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 I don't care. Really, I don't care. But I'll probably keep my exposures pretty limited. Anyways, that wraps up your course history buckets. Let's go ahead and move into the recent form buckets, which we haven't been able to look at over the last couple of years or last couple of weeks because we hadn't really had any events prior to those events. So what I really like to do is the majority of the field, I want to have at least two, uh, two tournaments under their belt before really keeping track of recent form. So now that we're on the fourth event of the PGA Tour season this calendar year, because remember, PGA Tour season started during the fall swing. But this calendar year, there's only been three. This is the fourth one. So now I can actually start recording recent form stuff. So that's what we're doing here. And we're going to start with the recent form one bucket, which we're projecting one to three inside the top 10. This is your best recent form heading into this event. And you already know it's going to be headed by Rom. He's got two wins in the last two events he played in. Yeah, it's pretty good. We go ahead and put recent form one up here. So we have a limited amount of golfers in this field or in this bucket. There are 12. We're projecting somewhere between one to three. So pick your poison. Personally, I like Rom. We already talked about Taylor Montgomery. I like Montgomery. I like Max Homa. And the rest of the guys I'm, I'm okay with. Like we talked about McNeely. I don't mind playing someone like McNeely. That's fine. Uh, but yeah, one to three. And there has been one year where we, we didn't see one one of these golfers inside the top 10, but otherwise pretty decent. In fact, why don't I go ahead and pull up the actual buckets? I want to see the raw numbers. So it pulls from this top 10 tournament history, recent form thing or uh, matrix. Ooh, recent. Fo Look at this guys. Holy moly. We haven't seen less than two and and on average we see three and above minus 2018 and minus 2022 now i'm sure this is probably based off of how many golfers were in that bucket each of those years and if i were to do that let me go ahead and hide this and we can actually compare uh scroll over so let's highlight the years where there was zero and two from this bucket, remember we're looking at this one and we're looking at the totals here. They are small numbers. How is the top 10 percentage that bad? Oh, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. You probably already spotted this, my bad. Recent form is this one and this one. That, okay. Yeah, and so this is a, a really good tournament. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit so you can see what we're looking at. Again, we're looking at row 84, which is your recent form one bucket. You can see the numbers are here. I have to update that. My bad. But then you also see um, the totals for top 10 finishers in row 30. So I'm highlighting the, the lowest amount, and it's two and zero. They don't happen to be the lowest amount of golfers in those, you know, each or in those buckets. It's like we've seen 2021, there was 14. Yeah, it's going to do this weird thing. Um, 2021, there's 14 golfers in there. And in 2015, there were nine. But when we look at top tens, we had three in 2015. And in 2021, we had four. So even when the number is small, like it is this year, there's still a good representation from that bucket to finish inside the top 10. So what I'm trying to say, if, 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 that, if your eyes glossed over and you're just like, I don't know what the hell you were just talking about there. Very rarely do we see less than two golfers from this bucket be inside the top 10. Now, I am projecting somewhere between one to three. And again, this, this includes how many golfers are in that bucket this year, as well as the strength of field points that go towards it. But we have a very, very high success rate, 22.63. 
of finishing inside the top 10. And I just want to double check. Yeah, so we're looking at this number right here. It's equals 100. Yep. Yeah. So of all golfers in this bucket, dating back to 2013, 24% of them, or 20, yeah, basically, well, 22.63% of them have finished inside the top 10. And only one year did we see zero. So it's like, it's a given that we're going to have at least one. This is an anchor bucket to choose from. Pretty hard not to select John Rahm once again. Pretty hard. Uh, and really hard to not select at least two golfers from here. Max Homa is here. Montgomery is here. Those are two golfers that I like. But of course, these 10K golfers, any combination of the two could finish inside the top 10. Any combination of two of those three finish inside the top 10 which means then these guys kind of become obsolete not so much obsolete but they just not going to work out for you but yeah that's really interesting because again i like montgomery and i like max homa maybe i can play three of these guys and it'd be fine but i, I probably have to make a decision between montgomery and max homa probably do Anyways, moving on from there, though, recent form twos, we want somewhere between one to three, just like that bucket. We do have a 100% frequency rate, so that means at least one golfer from this bucket has finished inside the top 10 every single year. Our recent form two golfers this year are Will Zalatoris, Justin Thomas, Sung J M, Hideki Matsuyama for all 9K golfers and above. And then we've got a bunch of 7K golfers, really, one 8K and three 6Ks. Probably, again, we've seen at least one. Projections one to three. Man, this, this makes lineup building super hard. There actually could be an argument just by looking at this bucket to select offers only in the 9K range to start your lineups with. You could probably start with two or three if you wanted to use these buckets as your you know, method to build lineups around. But it actually makes me kind of gravitate my eyes more towards Brennan Steele this week. And again, Thomas Dietrich. And Scott Stallings. And if it's one to three, I might want to be more overweight on these guys and sprinkle in some of these guys up here. Oh, man. Again, this is where I love the optimizer. The optimizer is going to help me find probably the right combination of golfers to anchor around and then build lineups from going from there. So really interesting stuff. Our recent form three bucket, 40 to 60 range of recent form finishes. Again, one to three. Just looked at the time I need to get going. So we're going to we're going to buzz through these. Xander, Thagala, Cam Davis. Again, you want somewhere between one to three. We got a slew of seven and six K golfers, probably easy to choose. Uh, some, not so much easy, but not hard to get to some of these guys. Let's put it that way. So up to you again, projecting one to three. Recent form fours at 60 to 80 range, zero to one. But again, the buffer is two. So zero to two of recent form four golfers. There are only five 7K golfers in here and a bunch of 6Ks. So I think it's really easy to play 0-1 to one of these guys. And I think that's where I would probably stick to. I really like Kurt Kitayama. We already talked a lot about Davis Riley, how this probably isn't, you know, a, a tournament you want to play him at. Harris English and then the rest of the guys. Reason Form 5 is just bad play. Really, it's missed cuts, it's withdraws, it's disqualifications, any of that. When they average 80-plus for finishing position, that's, that's where they find themselves in this bucket. There are 42 golfers in this bucket, 0 to 1. And there's a two-point buffer, so keep that in mind if you do like some of the golfers I'm about to show you. Hendrith is in this bucket. Gary Woodland, Gorillo, Rogers, like... This kind of stinks. There are a lot of good golfers I like from this bucket, but it is only projecting zero to one. Again, we, we account for a two point buffer. That means no more than two, but realistically somewhere between zero to one. And that's kind of how I just see it. And then golfers who have not played this calendar year, we have 20 of them in the field. We are projecting zero to one here as well, but really, I mean, again, keep a two point buffer, but Probably just don't play any of these guys. Cam Champ, 
Wanto Griffin. Those are some very notable names. And, I mean, there are some other notable names, like J.B. Holmes, Camilo Vijegas. Uh, he's kind of been not a golfer you want to be playing anyways. I'm not going to talk about the rest of the guys. They're, they're, they're people you don't really have to think about. Don't play Johnny, huh? We, we discussed that Byron and I did in our podcast. Not a great spot for him this week. So, 0-2, to two, but really 0-1 to one for that bucket. Now, we talked about salaries already. 10-9-8-7-7-6 is a pretty decent approach. Even if you want to do like a 10-9-9-7-7-6, that would be fine. Or a 10-9 or a 10-8-8-7-7-6 or anything similar to that. Include a 6K, include a 10K, and then mix in the rest however you want. I don't think you can do a 10-9-9-8-6-6, 10 9 9 8 6 6 10 9 9 Eight, six, eight. Yeah, I don't think you can do something like that. Um, I think you're really kind of stuck between a 10, 9, 8, 8, 6, 6, or a 10, 9, 8, 8, 7, 6, or a 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 6, or a 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 7 approach. It's probably the way I would go. Uh, but if you did want to look at the projections of that, because I also include that, again, that includes strength of field points, that includes looking at past performances in those salaries. I'm projecting somewhere between 1 to 3 10K golfers being inside the top 10. I'm projecting 1 to 3 9K golfers being inside the top 10. 0 to 2 8K golfers, 1 to 3 7K golfers, 0 to 2 upper 6K golfers, and 0 to 1 lower 6K golfers. Probably don't really want to use any of those. Frequency rates, not terrible. You know, I think I have five years worth of salary data. Two of those years, a golfer from this bucket has finished inside the top 10. That is how that reads. Um, only one year an 8K golfer did not finish inside the top 10. Otherwise, you can almost look at each one of these buckets as having at least one inside the top 10 every single year, which is that 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 method. And that's kind of what I discussed with Byron in our video. So definitely something you should follow. The last bucket to talk about is our strokes gain buckets. If you're unfamiliar with what I do with these, check the description below. I have a link to this video or to the, the bucket system video. And in it, I do talk about these strokes gain stats in depth. I have not changed my stance on those. I still look at it the same way. Strokes gain one. We have 15 in that bucket this year. We usually see around 12. High success rate, high frequency rate. Projection's pretty high. Same goes with strength of field. These are your best golfers. Two to four. Projection, projecting inside the top 10. Even the conservative max projection is up there as well. That's all the, the all the golfers that have this dark green color next to their numbers. That's who we're talking about. And it's Rom, it's Finau, it's, it's Shoffley, Zalatoris. It's your best golfers. Two to four is what I'm projecting to be inside the top 10. That's pretty easy, right? It's a pretty easy projection for a lot of these guys. The thing is, you could theory craft different scenarios of some of these golfers being inside the top 10. Maybe you're like, yeah, this isn't a good setup for, for Finau. I don't want to play Finau this week. I don't, I don't want to play Xander. So you're skipping these two 10Ks. Like, okay, I, I, like, I like Rom. I'm going to go with Rom. Then you make a decision in the 9K range. How many do you think are going to finish inside the top 10 here? Do I think Will Zalatoris will do it again? Maybe. I, maybe I don't like Justin Thomas. I don't like Sung JM. Maybe it's just these three that I like. Then you come down to the 8K range. I don't like Day. I don't like Thigala. I could think about uh, Cam Davis. I don't like Stallings. Kurt Kitayama is a good filler. And I don't really care for the bends down here. So I've just highlighted six golfers. I can easily come up with four golfers to put in my lineup. And that would fit in this projection. Like I've already just, you know, shared what I thought about, you know, that, that bucket and the golfers in it. And what might happen with their performances so that's how i can get somewhere between two, two to four and i could get up to four by not even selecting any of the top named guys so maybe that's something you, you want to do zero to two for strokes gain two that starts with taylor montgomery which is really hard not to play someone like him now this is zero to two so that makes kind of decision making easier because if you did want to go with a like, taylor montgomery you can only select up to one other guy to be in your lineup. 
based off of the projections. That's hard to make when the rest of the guys don't look that great. Now again, it's 0-2, to two, so easily nobody from this range could be inside the top 10, and that would be fine by me. I could easily, you know, fade uh, Taylor Montgomery. That's not t terrible to me, not a terrible idea. Could fade Bradley, could fade Rose, or I could play Rose and fade everyone else. Like, that's the beauty of the bucket system. So, 0-2 to two there. 1-3 to three strokes gain 3. Now, this is positive off the tee and negative putting, so this is team no putt essentially it's good off the tee mostly good approach and bad putting so one to three we got morikawa siwu kim as your kind of your top price guys and then it's a bunch of just fillers that make lineup building kind of a little bit easier taylor pendrith is in there that's who I, i've been thinking about putting in my lineups uh same goes with alex smalley will gordon i've already talked at length and Steel, I think Steel's probably going to be a core play of mine. Um, I've just selected four, and our projection's one to three. So I've already kind of, in my head, found some golfers I do want to play and I like. Also like some of these 6K and 7K guys. Bramlett, Yuan, Yu, I don't mind those guys. MJ Duffy had a pretty good um, performance for like the first two rounds at the American Express, so maybe he's got something in the tank. Those are all decent like options in my opinion the next couple buckets uh not super high with projections but like stroke chain four that's that so stroke chain four is interesting we're projecting zero to two inside the top 10 this is negative off the t now negative off the t usually means you're not good you know with your driver you don't hit the ball very far and we see i mean look at how much red is on the screen under the driving distance bucket um Harry Hall is someone who hits the ball far, but is very inaccurate. Oh, two Harrys. Two Harrys don't make a right. Harry Higgs also hits the ball far. Very, very inaccurate. 48% of his driving accuracy. That's not great. No one has good driving accuracy here, which I would almost argue you need to have at this event, unless you hit the ball really, really far, which we kind of already kind of talked about there with uh, Higgs and Hall. Steven Yeager seems like a good decision. Uh, Adam Hadwin's very accurate, but he's very short off the tee. That makes this really difficult. Uh, the projection's zero to two, so it, you could just easily ignore this bucket and not select anybody from here. But I also think it's going to be difficult not to have at least one of these guys in your lineup. Or I should say in your lineup, but one of these guys doesn't finish inside the top 10. And at these price tags, makes it kind of easy to build lineups around. Personally, I think I'm just going to set this as zero to one and be fine with it because I don't like anybody from these buckets. And maybe that's going to be a detriment to me when it comes to actual lineup building and missing out on some guys. But yeah, it, zero to two is our projection. The next two buckets are kind of irrelevant, but you're going to find one of these golfers really interesting. So strokes gain five is negative off the tee and negative putting. I'm projecting zero to one. Very, 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 very low success rate. Not a really good frequency rate. Um, there are 32 golfers in that bucket this year where we normally see 27. This one is headed by a very, very interesting name, and his name... Hideki Matsuyama. Um, not a good bucket to be in. Now, Hideki Matsuyama is a generational talent. And I don't know. I don't know if I should use it that way, but he's a very good golfer. Obviously, I don't know if he just had over the last year some bad swing. I think it's the first time I've seen him in the strokes gain five bucket. I think he was either strokes gain four last week or maybe um, a couple weeks ago at the Sony. He was a strokes gain four golfer. I don't think he was a strokes gain five. So off the tee is just barely negative. He's kind of a break-even guy. Same goes with putting. Approach is still good, and around the green is still good, but... Well, let's put it this way. Strokes gain, T to green, good. Strokes gain total, still good. It's Hideki, you know, but I would rather his, his off-the-T stats be a little bit more impressive than that. Um, I personally don't want to just depend on his approach play and around the green play, but maybe this is actually a time where it's, it's good, because if we think about this... The course plays tough, hitting out of the rough. It's 
probably something that he's been more accustomed to lately. Around the green being good as it is, sets him up for easy pars. I don't think all pars are going to win this tournament. This isn't a U.S. Open, but, you know, 12, 14 under might be the winning score. This might help someone like Matsuyama excel, but the rest of this bucket, there are some names that you can just probably just cross off. Fowler, Hoffman, Kazire, and then the rest of the guys, uh, not even worth mentioning. But, yeah, not great bucket. Zero to one. And then Stroke Chain 6 is also 0-1. to one. I don't even have to go back to that. Usually I don't pick anyone from here. You got J.B. Holmes, this is Joey Versich guy, and Michael Herrera. Not choosing any of these guys either. So that wraps up the Stroke Chain Buckets. That also wraps up this video. So with that being said, the only one thing to do is, is to remind you all of the giveaways that I'm running. You want a chance to win $50 for the month or $5 for this week? Be subscribed, comment down below, leave me anything. If you need a topic, give me your favorite two golfers you're building your lamps around this week um, and you'll get a free entry. In fact, I'll probably be putting out somewhere close to like seven videos, six to eight videos, I should say. If you comment on each one of those, you get one free entry per video. So if I do put out six, you can get up to six free entries that goes into, again, this monthly giveaway or the weekly giveaway during next Monday's video, you get a chance to win five bucks. Just, I just ask for your participation. That, that is all. Second giveaway is more like a rebate prize picks. There's a link in the description. that will get you the signup page. Use the promo code sweet spot during signup. And by that, by the way, that link just automatically populates that and put $20 in your account. So you sign up using that promo code, put $20 in your account. I will give you $20 back. But of course, you can put up to 100 and prize picks will match your deposit up to $100. And you have $200 in your account. And really, that will only cost you 80 because you're still going to get $20 back from me. So again, link in the description below. I also provided a cheat sheet earlier on in the, be or in the beginning of this video, but there's a link to that spreadsheet in the description below. So go take a look at it. I do have to update that. I'll do that before you even see this video. Um... So that'll be ready to go again, make a copy with that spreadsheet and you can follow along with me in all the videos that I put out this week. And then the optimizer will be available tomorrow. Uh, you just got to obviously participate on the channel, be subscribed, contact me at sweetspotdfs at gmail.com and get your hands on the optimizer. Again, it uses the bucket system to build lineups. There's a video on how to use the, the optimizer in the description of this video and all the videos that I provide. So if you want to see how it works, Go check that video out. Other than that, I've got nothing else. So with that being said, thank you for watching. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye.